Joining me in the studio now is Jasmine Dia, the Managing Director of Global Nuclear Security Partners. Jasmine, thank you for coming to the studio. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Ashley. We heard the Prime Minister there saying again, there's no costs attached to this. We know that the Coalition has promised the costings before the election, but we're a bit in the dark as to where the numbers land on this. He said there's no plan as to how to get around the ban on nuclear. And the Prime Minister claiming that news conference, six of seven sites have been designated to do other activities. We saw yesterday Chris Bowen saying that nuclear is incompatible with renewables. That was a sort of new line of attack that we've heard this week. What do you make of that? Well, it's not an either or. And this is, I think, the problem with Australia's energy policy debate at the moment. It's quite polarised and both the government and the coalition are saying that there's a strong stance, either nuclear or renewables, but a good energy mix should have a combination of all of these. And we shouldn't be investing in one technological source because that is how we won't have energy security into the long term. And this is where I think things like the legal ban being lifted allows us to see what does the Australian energy mix really look like and need to look like to allow us to do manufacturing, industrial processing, but also live in a technologically advanced world where we want power 24-7, not just during sunshine, not just during great wind uh, times. We, we want to be able to have strong, reliable power all the time. Is there any need for that ban anymore in 2024, in your view? That's a huge hurdle for the coalition to overcome. It is, and I think it's a very outdated ban. Uh, We've seen globally a lot of countries starting to embark on nuclear programs because they realise they need to investigate this to see whether it works for them to reach net zero goals. And I think it is wise for Australia to do the same. And look, it, we may not come back and say that we need a heap of nuclear sites, but there are probably sites in Australia that would be very beneficial for nuclear power to provide them clean energy. No doubt you've had a look pretty closely at the sites being proposed by the Coalition. Yeah. What do you make of them? Have they have they got the, the right spots, do you think? Well, it, it's us, utilising the infrastructure that already exists. Where I think the Coalition's plan misses the mark is the north of Australia is still heavily reliant on diesel generators providing their power and energy. Uh, nuclear technological advancements in smaller micro-reactors could allow those towns to have energy not reliant on diesel, rather than looking at big plants replacing coal. I think it's a great start, but I don't necessarily think it answers the real problem areas where our power and energy needs to be looked at in more detail. A lot of the sites have agriculture uh, communities around them. Yeah. There's been some debate this this week about the water that might be required for nuclear reactors and, and whether or not that could pose a risk to the, the needs of the agricultural communities in the surrounds. What do you make of that? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the power plants around France, Canada are also around agricultural areas and how a nuclear power plant uses water, it's, it's two systems. One is the reactor core system that has some water for cooling, but the bulk is used in a secondary system where the water comes in, is used to cool, and it's not touching any of the radiological material and is recycled back out into the system. So whilst it utilises a lot of water on site, a lot of that water is processed back out uh, into the environment in levels that are often reduced from when it was taken in the first place. And so I think we need to look at some of the agricultural areas globally that have nuclear power. France is a really great example to see the impacts are not great um, they work together quite well. I mentioned we're still in the dark about the economic case surrounding the coalition's policy. Yeah. But as somebody who knows this area really well, what are we talking about in terms of ballpark costs for these nuclear reactors? Well, the costs will be high because capital costs of nuclear are high. But what I'm hoping we see from the coalition is a plan that shows the lifetime of these plants, 60 to 80 years, and how those operational costs will return for cheaper energy bills for Australians as we get power from that. That's what I'm hoping we see from that plan. Uh, the figures will be high because energy production is high. We're seeing high figures for renewables. We're seeing very high figures for hydrogen production. So um, what I hope we see is not it costed for a 10-year cycle, what it's costed for the lifetime of the plant, which is where we'll see the real benefits. Jasmine Dare, really fascinating to hear your insights. Thanks so much for coming to the studio. We appreciate Thank you, it. Ashley.